Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to Latvia's Gaza Investor Conference webinar about financial results of six months 2019. Today we are hosted by Latvia's Gaza Vice Chairman of the Management Board, Sebastian Groblinhoff. Before I give the floor to Mr. Groblinhoff, let me shortly introduce you with the agenda of the webinar. Firstly, we will have company's presentation, which will be followed by questions and answers session. If you have any questions that you would like to ask Latvia's Gaz, please use the question box on the right hand side of your screen. All questions will be addressed after the presentation. Mr. Groblinhoff, I invite you to start the presentation. Many thanks, Eva. Dear shareholders, investors, analysts, good afternoon and a warm welcome also from my side to this webinar. Let me quickly guide you through the agenda of today's webinar. And I will begin with a short review on Latvia's Gaza current group structure and shareholder structure. After that, we will look into the key market developments that determine the operating environment of Latvia's Gaza during the first half of 2019. I will then explain the final results for the first six months of the year. And before closing the presentation part, with, I will go into an outlook for the second half of 2019. And uh, finally, we have reserved some time for answering any questions that you might have. So let's start with the group's current structure. After the completion of the legally required unbundling of the formerly fully integrated business activities, the group today consists of two business segments. The natural gas sales and trading segment comprises the purchase, trading and sale of natural gas. It includes wholesale trading the sale of natural gas to industrial and commercial customers, as well as to households. The distribution segment provides natural gas distribution services and is under the control of the JSC Gaso, which is a 100% subsidiary of Latvia's Gaza. Gaso holds an exclusive license for the distribution of natural gas on the territory of Latvia. The license granted by the Public Utilities Commission on 7 December 2017 is valid until 6 December 2037. Gazo owns and operates all distribution assets necessary to provide the respective services to its more than 400,000 customers. And in that respect, it is also important to note that the energy law requires the distribution business to be legally and operationally independent from the gas sales and trading business. Therefore, Gazo sustains fully separate operations and has an own independent board of management and supervisory council. Despite the fact that Latvia's Gaza consolidates financial results on a group level, the JSC Gaza also publishes its own financial reports. The webinar today will present financial results for the group, as well as separately for Latvia's Gaza operating the sales and trading business. In case you are interested in more detail concerning the financial position, operations and strategy of the distribution segment, please visit the website of the JSC Gazo for more information. Let me also quickly turn to the current shareholder structure of Latvia's Gaza Group. There have been no changes with regard to the four key shareholders of Latvia's Gaza in the first half 2019. With 34% of the group's shares, the PJC Gazprom is still the biggest single shareholder followed by Margaret Gas 2 with 28.97%. Unipa Ruhrgas International and Itera Latvia hold 18.26% and 16% of the shares respectively. The remaining 2.77% belong to small shareholders and individuals. This is a short introduction on our group structure and the shareholder structure as of 30th June 2019. Now continue with highlighting the key market developments during the first half of the year. Essentially, two main factors strongly influenced the operating environment for the group during this period. Firstly, Latvia, as well as many parts of Europe and Asia, witnessed above seasonal normal temperatures, leading to lower natural gas demand in many consumption regions. The average air temperature in Latvia during the period from January to June was one and a half degrees higher than during the same period a year before. As you can see in the graph on the left-hand side, particularly during the months of February and March, 
which are usually cold months with strong gas demand, temperatures were significantly higher than normal. Secondly, prices at European natural gas hubs collapsed. Between January and June 2019, the price for the gas pool front on index, for example, dropped by more than 40%. Comparing June 2019 with October 2018, the gas pool price even fell by more than 50%. Apart from that, hub prices exhibit a strong short-term volatility. We have seen individual trading days during which prices moved up or down by more than one euro per megawatt hour. Now, both the mild winter as well as the collapse in hub prices were the dominating developments in the global gas market during the first half of the year. The mild temperature in Europe and Asia, in combination with the commissioning of new LNG production facilities, changed the global supply pattern observed during previous winter periods. As the Asian market had covered a great deal of its winter demand in advance, the lower consumption caused by warmer weather led to a of LNG spot cargos. Free LNG cargos that usually find their way into Asia during the core winter months this year ended up in Europe. With its significant natural gas storage capacities and a large fleet of gas-fired power stations, Europe remains the only market that can absorb short-term access supplies in the global market. However, the influx of the LNG exerted a strong downward pressure on European hub prices. Apart from that, storage levels at the end of the winter season in early April across Europe were significantly higher than a year before. The drop in short-term prices led to a widening of the price spread for gas delivered in summer 2019 and the winter season 2019-2020. The so-called summer winter spread determines whether it is commercially attractive for traders to use storage or not. In case the summer winter spread is higher than the cost of storage, gas traders have an incentive to use storage. In contrast to previous years, the opening and the early opening of the summer winter spread triggered first storage injections across Europe already during May and June. And it's also important to mention that on a more general political level, the global discussion on measures against climate change and the future role of fossil fuels continued. Let's turn from the global perspective to the regional Baltic market. The developments in the regional Baltic market during the last six months essentially reflect the situation in global gas markets. Regional gas prices significantly dropped as the gas pool front month's price is one of the key references for customers in the Baltic region. On the physical supply side, more LNG arrived at the Klaipeda terminal in comparison to previous years, further increasing the avail availability of natural gas. At the same time, the growing summer winter spread led to early injections into the Intrakans underground gas storage. On the trading side of the business, competition in the Latvian market as well as cross-border competition in the region further intensified. Because of the falling prices, several customers already in late January and February started to contract gas for the new season. In previous years, the contracting season had started only in late March, early April. Apart from that, starting approximately as of March, when prices dropped further, several customers that had previously closed fixed price contract based on higher price levels asked for price adjustments or even terminated their supply contracts. Nevertheless, as in the past, gas demand remained highly dependent on the use of gas in the power generation segment. Water levels in River Daugava and price developments at the Nordic Power Exchange remained key drivers behind the demand for gas in power production. Let me move from the more general global and regional developments to sharing some comments on selected key events that affected the operations of Latvia's gas group during the first seven, and not just only the first six, but also the first seven months of the year. On 1st January, new gaso distribution tariffs became effective. 
in contrast to the fully consumption-based tariff that was in place until the 31st of December 2018, the new tariff consists of both a fixed part as well as a consumption-dependent part. In February, first traders started to compete with Latvia's Gaza in the household segment. Despite the arrival of new entrants, Latvia's Gaza remains the public trader in the household segment, offering natural gas based on a regulated tariff. However, Latvia's Gaza also strives to offer new products and services for its approximately 400,000 household customers. In March, Latvia's Gaza participated in an auction held by Conexus Baltic Grid for keeping an active natural gas quantity and ensuring availability at the, at the storage facility in 2019-2020. In total, Conexus Baltic Grid auctioned 2.85 terawatts of commitments. As in 2018, Latvia's Gaza won several lots in the auction and committed to keep a certain quantity of natural gas in the Inchukan's underground gas storage until the end of February 2020. For its commitment, Latvia's Gaza will receive a respective financial compensation. In April, the sales and trading segment successfully managed the go-live of the first module of its new billing system and customer portal. The first module covers open market customers, and this is essentially corporate and small and medium-sized enterprises. In a second phase, the new billing system and customer portal will also be implemented for household customers. Overall, Latvia's Gaza remains committed to improving the effectiveness and efficiency of its business and customer care processes. In May, Conexus Baltic Grid, in line with tariff calculation methodology, announced to lower tariffs for the bundle storage product. And as a result of this, Latvia's Gaza expects that the lower tariff will lead to a slight reduction in its total storage costs planned for 2019. In June, information about additional vessels bringing LNG into the Klaipeda LNG terminal will be public. As of today, all slots of the terminal for the remaining months of the year are booked. And this is a stark contrast to what we have seen in the previous year, where quite a lot of the capacity at the terminal stayed idle. The additional LNG supplies will further increase the physical supply availability of natural gas in the Baltic region. On 19th of June, Latvia's Gaza held its annual shareholders meeting. Shareholders decided to pay out dividends totaling more than 21 million euro. The dividend payout reflects the group's strong business performance in 2018. In July, Conexus Baltic Grid, due to technical reasons, reduced the available injection capacity at the Inchukan's underground gas storage by 40%. To mitigate the effects from the current curtailments, Conexus has prolonged the injection period until November. Still, Latvia's Gaza and other traders making use of the storage facility had to adjust their injection programs accordingly. In July, Latvia's Gaza also announced to move its administrative office to another address. The move will take place during the fourth quarter of 2019. A separate announcement of the exact address and the new office and the date of relocation will follow in due course. The location of Latvia's Gaza's customer service center, as well as the location and legal address of the JSC Gazo, will remain at 20 Wagono Street in Riga. So much about the key events that affected the group's operations in the first six months of the year. And at this time, we would like to introduce two short poll questions. And the idea behind these poll questions is that we get a feedback from you as listeners and users of financial and other information that Latvia's Gaza is providing. And the first question is connected to our website. And uh, the question essentially reads as follows. Do you visit the investor relations section on the Latvia's Gaza website to retrieve financial and other information? And the poll is now open for questions, and we kindly ask you to make use of the three options that we have given. Yes, regularly, and that means at least three times per quarter. Sometimes, and that means at least one to two times per year, or no, never. 
I hope you can all see the poll questions and have the possibility to answer. And this, I think, should be sufficient for a quick response. So we close uh, this question. And then there is a second question we would like to ask you. And this is an open question. And I would kindly ask you to use the possibility um, asking questions. You simply use this free field to provide your answers. And we will then collect your feedback and analyze it after this webinar. And the question reads as follows. What additional investors related information should Latvia's Gaza provide on the website on a more frequent basis? We would very much appreciate if you take a couple of seconds to write an answer um, via the question section that you have in your webinar tool. I will repeat the question. What additional investors related information should Latvia's Gaza provide on the website on a more frequent basis? And we really appreciate if you answer the question because it will help us to gear our communication towards your needs and to become more, even more transparent and more targeted on your requirements. So while you are probably finishing the writing, um, I would then move to the next part of our presentation. And this is now turning to the financial and uh, the quantitative results in the first half of the year. So before we jump into the financial numbers, let's first have a quick look at the development of sales in both segments. The amount of natural gas transported by Gazo through the gas distribution network in the first half of 2019 in a year-on-year -year comparison decreased by 6.7%. And the key reason for this lower throughput was the milder winter that I've mentioned before, and it simply led to lower total gas demand in Latvia. Looking at the sales and trading segment, despite the drop in the total Latvian gas demand, the sales and trading segment managed to increase its sales by quite a substantial percentage, by 54% year on year. And this is due to the significantly higher gas demand in power generation during May and June, and strong deliveries into the Estonian natural gas market. And in total, the segment sold 755 million cubic meters of natural gas during the first half of 2019. Now with the sales numbers, let's move into financials. And I will have a look at three indicators, net turnover, EBITDA and net profit. The group's net turnover, and this number is net of any excise taxes for the first six months of the year, increased by 40% year on year. While the net turnover in the distribution segment decreased by 12.4%, the strong sales in the sales and trading segment pushed the group net turnover significantly higher. And this despite the fact that market prices came down, down so significantly. However, this significant increase in the group net is not reflected in the group's EBITDA and in the group's net profit. EBITDA dropped by approximately 60% from 28.1 million to 11.2 million, and group net profit even decreased by a larger percentage, by 78%, from 21.7 million to 2.7 million. The reasons for this significant drop mainly relate to the operations of Latvia's Gaza comprising the sales and trading segment. For that reason, I will now continue with providing more details on the results of Latvia's Gaza and the sales and trading business. Despite the mild winter and the drop in market prices, net turnover, as mentioned before, increased also for Latvia's Gaza by almost 50% year on year. As mentioned before, actually two main factors driving this growth in turnover. It's the high prices at the Nordic Power Exchange and lower running hours of hydropower plants that led to significantly higher gas demand in the power generation segment. And second, we have the strong sales to newly acquired customers in Estonia. However, despite this year-on-year -year increase in net turnover, we had a number of unfavorable factors that weighed heavily on the sales and trading segments operations and resulted in negative earnings for the first six months of the year. 
And these negative earnings in combination with corporate income taxes on dividends that we paid out or that we, the shareholders meeting decided on in June resulted in a net loss of 4.3 million euro. And this is a substantial change, at least with regard to the tax regime. Uh, as you may know, we had changes in Latvian tax legislation um, leading to the situation that corporate income taxes are paid in the most dividends are paid out. But what are the main reasons for the significant drop in the earnings before interest, taxes and depreciations and net profit in comparison to the strong financial performance in 2018? It was essentially a combination of four unfavorable factors hitting our bottom line. And it's the mild winter and the drop in market prices, mark to market losses on financial derivatives, it's the termination of sales contracts and price revisions, and it's early booking of storage. I'll give a bit more color to each of these factors by going through them in turn. And for your orientation, um, you can see Harvey balls at the right side of the graph and they indicate the negative weight of each factor on the financial results. So let me begin with the first factor that affected our results. Despite the strong sales to Estonia, the extremely mild temperatures during the core winter months left the sales and trading business with a significantly higher than planned volume of natural gas in the Inshukan's underground gas storage at the end of the winter. Due to the rapidly falling market prices, the cost of the gas injected into the storage during the third quarter 2018 increasingly became a financial burden. And when you remember the chart I showed to you on the prices, prices peaked in September, October 2018. We have seen prices of 27, 28 euro per megawatt. And after that moment, prices only moved downwards. And as we still injected gas in September, this started to become a financial burden in 2019 when we were still delivering gas out of the storage. And at a certain moment, margins for gas supplied from the IUGS turned negative. Our hedging activities could prevent that the losses from this unplanned development were not even higher. But still, it hit the sales and trading segment's bottom line and is the single biggest effect behind the weak financial performance in the first half 2019. The second effect hitting our results was the unrealized losses from financial inf instruments. And despite the positive income from financial derivatives that settled during the first months of the year, mark-to-market losses on open financial derivatives for fixed gas delivery starting as of November 2019 put a further strain on our half-year financial performance. Particularly the early start of the contracting season with customers locking in fixed prices already in January, February of this year for delivery starting only in October, November left a significant impact on the sales results. The continuously falling market prices after January, February and then March subsequently increased the unrealized mark-to-market losses from financial instruments, which Latvia's Gase in line with IFRS accounting rules recognizes at fair value through profit and loss. The positive effect from the respective income related to those hedges will only materialize when the hedges settle and physical delivery takes place. And as mentioned, the deliveries connected to these hedges will begin only as of October, November this year, and then start reverting the current mark to market losses. I mentioned this because Latvia's Gaza at this moment in time is not using the full hedge accounting. And that's the reason why based on the IFRS accounting rules, we have to recognize the unrealized losses through profit and loss. The third effect was that because of the continuously falling market prices, several customers of Latvia's Gaza that had closed fixed price contracts in late 2018 and early 2019 required price adjustments or even terminated their contracts. Paying the termination fee and closing a new contract for those customers seemed to be more commercially attractive than simply staying and continuing with the contracts on the existing terms and conditions. 
The penalties paid by customers, however, were not sufficient to cover the true losses of Latvia's Gaza that were stemming from the termination of the contracts. In particular, the penalties could not fully compensate the losses connected to fixing the price for customers through financial derivatives. And as a response to this development, Latvia's Gaza recently reviewed and updated its contract termination conditions to be then possible within the existing market regulations. But for the future, we request from our customers that they commit to take over potential losses stemming from financial derivatives that Latvia's Gaza has entered into when fixing prices. Finally, earlier than planned storage bookings further depressed the financial result for the first half of 2019. Due to high competition for storage capacity triggered by the widening summer winter spreads during April and May, Latvia's Gaza booked and paid for storage capacity earlier than initially planned. Apart from the strong underlying economic rationale, Latvia's Gaza on time secured the necessary storage capacity for seamless supplies during the winter season 2019-2020. The higher costs for the storage bookings during the first half of 2019 will be offset by respective lower than planned expenses for storage during the second half of the year. So to sum it up, we have in total four key effects that affected our results. We have two irreversible effects that lead to structural losses, that is the losses from the um, storage quantities that were expensive and we had to sell them at a loss, and it's the termination of sales contracts and price revisions. The effects that we currently see from mark-to-market losses on financial derivatives and the early booking of storage will start reverting as of the second half of the year or the fourth quarter respectively. Despite the weak operational result, um, the group still maintains a healthy balance sheet and a good liquidity position. We have a change in the debt to equity ratio, but this one essentially stems from the increase in current liabilities related to the dividend decision taken by the annual shareholders meeting on the 19th of June. And accounting rules again foresee that the moment the decision is taken, we have to recognize it in our books and payment then followed in July. The drop in the current ratio reflects the distinct seasonality of the natural gas business. To ensure security of supply during the winter months, Latvia's gas usually injects significant gas quantities into the Inchukan's underground gas storage during the summer months. While Latvia's gas immediately needs to pay this injected gas, customers will typically consume and subsequently pay most of this gas only during the winter period. And hence, the sales and trading segment utilizes larger amounts of cash during the summer months that will only flow back during the winter season. To support its liquidity position, Latvia's Gaza has in place a revolving credit facility with a capacity of up to 50 million euro. The current overdraft agreement with the Latvian branch of OP Bank covers the period from 1st June 2019 until May 2021. Due to the currently low absolute market prices, Latvia's Gaza, however, needed less cash than in the previous year for storage injection. And from this follows that our necessary working capital in the first months of 2019 was respectively lower. With an increase in prices, and we have seen how fast prices can come down, so they could also go up again quickly, um, the situation might change again, at least with regard to working capital and the utilization of cash. To actively monitor and manage the liquidity risk, Latvia's Gaza continuously improves its internal cash planning tools and instruments. Let me also give you a quick update on capital expenditures and operating expenses of the sales and trading segment. With regard to capital expenditures, the segment's focus is on replacing and upgrading IT systems and infrastructure. The CAPEX strategy 2019-2020 aims at improving the effectiveness and efficiency of core business and customer processes. At the heart of the current investment program is the implementation of the second phase of the new billing system and customer portal. In total, Latvia's Gaza plans to spend approximately 2.4 million euro 
on IT systems and infrastructure in 2019. After the first six months of the year, the investment program is well on track with no overspending expected for the full year at this moment. And concerning operating expenses, the Latvia's Gaza sales and trading segment already in 2018 initiated an ambitious cost savings program. The program strives to decrease the operating expenses in 2019 15% year on year. And despite the difficult market environment, um, we can share the information that after the six months of 2019, the cost savings program is well on track. Now, before I'm going to close the presentation part, I would like to provide you with a short outlook on the full year 2019. With regard to the market environment, we expect that market prices will remain volatile and could stay on lower absolute levels in comparison to last year. However, winter prices will most likely be influenced by the ongoing negotiations concerning the future transit of Russian gas through the Ukraine. The current transit agreement expires at the end of this year and the parties, unfortunately, so far have not reached an agreement on terms for a transit beyond that date. The second issue that will keep us busy and that will have an impact is the recent reductions in the technical available injection capacity at the Inshukan's underground storage. And we simply anticipate further uncertainties around the injection regime during the upcoming weeks and months. And finally, the availability of attractively priced LNG will most likely spur short-term competition in the Baltic region. Concerning the financial results for the fiscal year 2019, we are fully committed to improving the sales and trading result during the second half of 2019. Nevertheless, due to the mentioned reasons, the market environment will remain challenging. However, as noted before, income from physical supply contracts and the settlement of the respective hedges will begin to revert the current unrealized mark-to-market -market losses starting as of October, November. Besides that, the early injection of natural gas to the storage facility will lead to respectively lower expenditures for storage capacity in the second half of the year. And looking at it from an overall perspective, we expect a positive profit on group level for the fiscal year 2019, albeit it will be lower than the 2018 result. And that's, that's already clear today. Let me finally share some information concerning our financial calendar in 2019. And first we will have on the 9th of October on the request of one of our shareholders, Gazprom, an extraordinary shareholders meeting. And the agenda will essentially comprise two items. It's recalling the current company council and electing a new company council. And more information and all relevant documents connected to this extraordinary shareholders meeting are available on the Latvia's Gaza website, on the website of the Central Storage of Regulated Information and the website of Nasdaq Riga. And the second piece of information is that Vias Gaza plans to publish its nine months 2019 unaudited financial statements on the 27th of November 2019. So that's the two events coming up in the next months. This is what we wanted to share with you today and I'm happy and open to take now any questions that you might have. Many thanks. Thank you for the presentation. There are no questions just yet, so let's wait a, wait a minute longer to see whether someone has something to ask. So a reminder to audience, uh, please use the question box on the right side of your screen if you do have any questions to be asked. Uh, all right. Um, since there are no questions from the audience, uh, with this I'd like to thank you for the presentation uh, and also remind that the recording of the webinar will soon be available in Companies Announcements and also on NASDAQ Baltic YouTube channel. Uh, participants, thank you for joining. Mr. Grebwinghoff, thank you for the presentation once again. 
thanks.